Now as we're heating this and moving it, you notice I'm not moving too fast or putting too much flex on there. Do you see how it just pinked right there? That pink right there? That's what we want to avoid. Um, because if we are stretching this too much, then the binding is going to want to pull back to shape and pull away from our material. So we don't want to stretch this plastic by pulling it necessarily, but we kind of want it to just sort of like almost roll into its own shape there. Because um, as it cools, it will try to come back to its normal shape. So we'll go ahead and put this down to cool down mode for a second and hold this in place while it dries and cools. Again, this stuff is super hot when you've been uh, turning the heat gun on it. Uh, watch it all burn up your wire and uh, don't point it at your acetone. Both are probably things that I just did unknowingly and it's now on camera for the world to see me do up. So, anyway, uh, yeah, so, now we've kind of worked that around. We'll tape this guy up. Rotate this around. Now right through here it's a pretty subtle curve, um, but you see if I try to bend it without heating it, it wants to pull apart here. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. It wants to pull apart here, so that's why it's important that we still heat this so that this wants to settle in and live where it is. So right about here we stay flat, but right there is where it's going to bend against and put the pressure and it's going to cause that to pop out. Um, right as we come into this uh, curve here. So as we heat this, we're going to want to start heating about here, and we want to heat it all the way up to this other point here, um, which is probably hard to see because the gun's in the way. So from basically here to here, we want to try to heat all along this so that it doesn't want to gap out a little here. Now another thing to add into the equation to make it even more tricky is that when we get to this spot, it rolls off. Now it's not a tremendous amount, it's about an eighth of an inch, but it will cause a gap and make your binding job look really bad if you don't follow along with that. So that's part of why we cut off all this extra off the end of our binding here, because it's more weight out here flopping around while we're trying to hold this steady. So we'll go ahead and switch this back over to heat and start walking this around the curve here. I try to like very lightly hold it in an elevated path so that it wants to kind of rest into the channel. Um, that's one of those things that kind of requires a little bit of a light touch almost. There you see it's starting to heat. Um, and just pull right on around. But you can see here where it's gapping out as it's trying to pull against um, that fulcrum point where the binding wasn't heated evenly. And that's probably the hardest thing to work with with this stuff. The thinner the binding, uh, the more readily it takes the heat and kind of lets it follow all the way around um, and keep the curve and maintain that curve. Um, but, you know, the thicker stuff it's a little more resilient. You see how floppy this will go real quick on you. Um, and that's what we want to avoid because it dries, not dries, but um, it cools back down so quickly that if you work a twist in it, by the time you get it straightened back out, a lot of times it's already cooled enough that it's cooled that little wrinkle into the binding and it'll make your binding look lumpy. Um, we don't want that. We want it to look nice and clean and tidy. So we'll hold that in place. 
And we've got a pretty good little start here uh, coming along. We're starting to work down along this curve as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a little bit of our tape here. Hold that guy in place. And that will kind of help keep it supported so as we move along, we don't have to worry about that popping back off. Um, but now, you see where it wrinkled? I've got a little wrinkle there. I've got to try to like work out now with the heat gun again. Um, so, we will do that. Now this really tight corner here it's going to be kind of tricky, um, so I'm going to keep that a little bit from both sides. Careful not to get it too close where we actually end up charring our wood a little bit there. Um, but it's important to kind of work this stuff in sections here, especially where we're at because of having the curve there. Um, it's very difficult to kind of keep it sitting flat in your channel as well as be tight both ways. So now that we've kind of worked through that corner, we'll tape it in place so that it wants to live there as it finishes cooling off. Um, but as you can see, we're running uphill now, so we've got to bend this in such a way that it comes back down so it doesn't try to create a wrinkle and gap this out on our face. So, back to the heat gun and just kind of start working it on along. Um, I'll go ahead and come through this side to sort of help preheat both sides so that it heats more evenly. Um, it tends to not wrinkle as much. But you got to be careful not to actually leave it too long so you can char your wood um, and cause some problems that way too then you're trying to get out burn marks. Um, and if you overheat your bindings, it will bubble and start to almost boil and melt. Um, it will look pretty bad uh, and it will deform. And make your work look really amateur. So, got that nice and hot. Go ahead and put a couple of pieces of tape on here. Okay. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job keeping that folded back down and everything else. So now we've just got everything kind of lined up and ready to go, uh, but we still need to wrap it around this upper curve here, and that's a pretty tight bend. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and start heating it. Now, sometimes if I can, it's nice to let the weight of itself kind of do the work for you. Um, again, you want to heat this on down past the fold so that it doesn't try to lift the work that's already sitting flat. Um, but we preheated up this inside so that now as we start working along the outside, it's kind of using its own weight and sort of falling right into that channel for us. Um, Now, we still probably have to kind of help it along. Um, hold it in place a little bit. I always try to do a little bit of an overbend right past the corner here to kind of help lock that so that as it dries. And now, in that time right there, it's already came back and cooled off and it's back to like a room temperature state. So at this point, it all fits together pretty well. Um, what we'll start doing now is slowly removing 
little bits of tape as we go and gluing it and then kind of retaping it to hold. But um, you want to watch uh, using the heat and the acetone at the same time because well, actually the acetone softens this stuff up and is highly combustible. And so while it's soft, um, it will actually boil and cause your uh, bindings to bubble and put uh, small pock marks and things in there that um, can end up below the surface and be really difficult, if not impossible, to scrape out, in which case you have to, you know, pull your binding back off and then start over and, uh, you know, do a better job the next time around. So, um, anyway, that's kind of like uh, the step for heating and getting it kind of close uh, to the position that you want it. And, um, you know, from here you, you know, glue it in place and finish doing up some of the trim work. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys like it. This is a pretty straightforward, like, single ply kind of stuff. Um, uh, some of the other stuff I do includes multi-ply and side bindings. Even side bindings are a nightmare. Um, you know, because with this stuff here, you know, we're bending it the thin way, the thick way, you know, to go that way, it's much more rigid versus, you know, how much force it takes here. So if you've got a side ply, they're very thin this way, but they're wide that way. So trying to bend that inside a curve, you know, it just, it wants to pop and wrinkle and it deform. It's a nightmare. So, um, yeah, I'll try to do more videos on all of this stuff as, as we go and, uh, you know, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.